We're at the Autonomous Truck Conference in Detroit, and I'm talking right now with Bill Kahn, who's the head of Advanced Concepts at Peterbilt. And Bill, bring us up to speed. What's Peterbilt's interest in autonomy, and what are you doing? Well, what we really focus on is advanced driver assist systems. Because a truck is such a more complicated vehicle than a car, um, we really make the driver a decision maker on the vehicle because we can do a lot of things to help him drive the vehicle, but ultimately it's going to get situations where you really need the driver to make the decision on when to proceed manually or when to, con to continue under automatic mode. Peterbilt builds all kinds of trucks. Are you looking at all of them or which specific types do you think lend themselves to autonomy? Well, right now the, uh, the best advanced driver assist system on the over road is the lane keeping truck, a truck that knows where the lanes are and can actively steer the truck down the center of the lanes. The technology is not that far out because we already have radars on the truck to keep it proper in following distance and we have cameras on the truck to provide sensor fusion and so all we're asking them is to provide a little bit more feedback to the driver and the key is that now we can actually control the steering column on the truck and steer the truck in it. If we can uh, lane keep on a vehicle we can probably take 85 to 9 percent of the burden of actively steering the truck out of the hands of the driver and allow him just to do things like monitor the traffic, uh, really monitor the roadway. Uh, you know, it's going to be a system that's a lot like your cruise control today. You can't just go out there and if you're in the rain or if you're in a construction zone, you don't use your cruise control. The system can only be as good or better than the driver itself. So again, direct sunlight might be something, uh, again, construction zones might be something that, you know, the driver's going to go ahead and, and take over manual control of. Uh, the area we're also looking at is in urban driving. Once the truck gets off the highway, can we help the driver move safer and more efficiently through an urban area? And so that's, we have two trucks currently exploring that capability as well. So that's very interesting. You really uh, focused on helping the driver rather than replacing the driver with autonomous technology. Absolutely correct. Again, if you think about, you get on a, high, on a road where you got a two lane road, intersecting a two lane road and a truck needs to make a right hand turn, it's gonna need to go in the other lane to maneuver that. And again, it's so much better to have the driver there with that capability. Uh, also, if the truck's going and it detects that something's in the roadway, it's probably, it might be a construction barrier, then it's gonna slow down and the driver's gonna need to take over and, and maneuver that, the vehicle through that manually. What's Peter Bilt's uh, viewpoint on platooning then, when one truck follows the other electronically? Platooning is a, a it's, it appears to be a very straightforward business case because it's a fuel economy improvement. Now, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, if you get the trucks too close together, then you'll kick the engine fan on the second truck. Hmm. And so then you need to back that truck up a little bit. And then again, if you get back just enough, then you might induce turbulence in the second truck, which can also affect the performance of the second truck, not necessarily the front. And basically what we found in our preliminary results from our testing now, is you get out about 55 to 60 feet separation, that's where your front truck and your back truck are seeing maximum efficiency. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense when you're a fleet, because mm -hmm. you know each other, and you know the capabilities of each truck. Uh, then going out and trying to be able to build a business case to platoon with other vehicles is what we're trying to evaluate now. Let's go back to the first example of helping the driver. Can you make a business case with that or can fleets make a business case with that? It's a, that is the, the challenge because safety systems are one of the hardest things to build a business case on until someone has an accident. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes very straightforward. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, people out there, you see it now, I mean, there's such a large uptake now on our, on our uh, adaptive cruise control systems on the vehicle that we really see that it is going to be a benefit because, again, lane keeping and, and, uh, is not that expensive because the systems are already on the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so and we have blind spot detection now on the vehicles, which is, you know, it's a passive system that tells the driver not to change lanes, but in the future that may be done automatically. And your lane keeping, is that in production now or still under test? It's still under test, but again, it's not that far out, probably two to three years. Gotcha. Bill Kahn, thanks so much for your time today. Very interesting what Peter Bilt's doing in this whole line of autonomy or driver assist. Advanced driver assist systems. Thanks. Right. Thanks Thank so much. You. Thank you very much. Good deal. Keep, keep tuning in. We got more coming from the floor of the Autonomous Truck Show in Detroit.